As the movie begins, we see a young woman named Tammy waking up in a flooded boat. It looks like the boat got destroyed in a hurricane, leaving Tammy bleeding from her head. She immediately gets up and cries out for her husband, Richard, thinking he might have fallen overboard and drowned. When she climbs out to the deck, Tammy finds herself in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with no signs of her husband. Five months before the incident, Tammy is seen sailing the ocean to go to a French island named Tahiti. She arrives at her destination, where the island official inquires about her profession and the purpose of the visit. But since Tammy is currently unemployed and is visiting the island in hopes of traveling the world, she simply responds with an uncomfortable smile. In the next scene, we see Tammy working at the port with a fellow worker named Deb. It's revealed that Tammy is originally from California, but she got tired of her regular 9-to-5 job and decided to travel the world instead. Moments later, a boat interrupts their conversation and the guy on board playfully teases the girls. When he docks his boat, the man introduces himself as Richard, and while Deb is unconcerned, Tammy looks interested in this guy. The next day, Tammy sees Richard working on his sail and approaches him to strike up a conversation. As the two chat on the rock, Richard invites her to join him for dinner, which Tammy gladly accepts. Later that night, they meet in Richard's boat as planned, and after talking for a while, they both get comfortable with each other. Tammy asks if Richard enjoys his life as a sailor, and the latter says he loves it more than anything, but claims that everything comes with a price. Tammy dreams of living a sailor's life and wants to spend her life at sea, so Richard offers to take her on a ride. The next day, Richard allows Tammy to steer the boat despite her lack of experience, and the two set sail. Eventually, Tammy demonstrates that she's a quick learner and is able to sail the boat flawlessly. The two then continue their adventures together as the day goes by, enjoying their time in nature. One day, Tammy takes Richard to a stunning waterfall hidden deep within a forest and jumps in. But on the other hand, Richard gets worried, believing Tammy's drowning and dives in to save her. However, he discovers that Tammy was simply pulling a prank on him while he searches for her underwater. In the next scene, we see Richard and Tammy on a beach somewhere. Richard takes out his Polaroid camera and takes a picture of Tammy for her Instagram. They then spend a romantic time together and embrace in a kiss. It seems like time has stopped for these two lovebirds on this beautiful island. Back in the present, Tammy tries to use the boat's radio to contact the marine rescue team for help, but the radio is not functional. We then see the wounded Tammy desperately trying to repair the boat with duct tape. Realizing that this is not really helpful under the circumstances, Tammy lies down in despair. But suddenly, she remembers not seeing the lifeboat on the main ship. Thinking Richard might still be alive, Tammy starts working to make the boat as functional as possible. She uses a manual pump to drain the water from the boat and improvises with the equipment at hand to set the sail straight. And at this point, Tammy is overjoyed since the boat can now move through the wind. A few moments later, Tammy finally sees the lifeboat through the binoculars floating in the distance. She immediately lowers the sail, and after attaching the rope to herself, she jumps in the water, hoping to pull Richard back to the boat. She swims towards the lifeboat, where Richard is barely hanging on to his life, but he's still breathing. Immediately, Tammy takes him back to the boat and reassures him that everything will be alright. In a flashback scene, we see the couple strolling around, where Richard shows Tammy a flower called frangipani. He claims that putting this flower on the left ear means a person is romantically committed and hands it to her. Later that night, Tammy reveals that her mother was only 15 when she was born and that she was raised by her dad's parents. Since she had a rocky childhood and her mother was usually absent, Tammy grew up wanting to escape society and travel the world as an adult. After some conversation, she gets up and asks Richard to dance with her and they join the other couples on the dance floor. As they embrace each other, Richard asks Tammy if she would like to sail the world with him, and of course, she gladly accepts. The following day, the couple's seen shopping for groceries while planning their next destination. On their way out, they're greeted by Richard's old friends, Christine and Peter. They introduce themselves, and Peter asks the couple to join them for a coffee, claiming that he has exciting news to share. Once they're seated at a bar, Peter and Christine ask Richard to take their boat back to California for them, and in exchange, they're willing to pay $10,000 and a first-class ticket to return. This really is a good offer, but Richard claims to only accept the deal for two tickets so that he can take Tammy with them. However, Tammy does not seem very happy with this offer. That evening, the couple plans their trip on the dock, but Tammy says she does not want to go back to the place that she deliberately left behind. Hearing this, Richard sees her point and promises to decline the California trip. 
Back in the present, Richard is seen lying down in the boat, and because of the injuries, he is not very mobile. Meanwhile, Tammy's doing everything in her power to get them back to the island. But after some calculations, she finds out that the boat has drifted way too far from their destination. Tammy realizes that going back 1,500 miles in a broken boat is almost impossible and starts fearing the worst. However, Richard the Sailorman claims that they do not have to go back to touch the land since San Diego is just about 25 days away. Just at that moment, Tammy figures out that they can reach Hawaii much faster since the wind will be on their side. But this plan can turn out to be very risky because if they miss Hawaii, the next stop is Japan, which is at least a couple of thousand miles away. But since they're forced to choose between two tough decisions, the couple decides to take the risk and head towards Hawaii. In the past, we see the couple on board Peter's luxury boat chatting and having drinks together. It's revealed that Catherine's father is hospitalized, requiring them to depart for London the next day. Later, during their private moment, Richard explains that accepting Peter's offer would provide them with enough funds for a year of travel. Tammy eventually realizes the benefit of securing some finances and agrees to go on the California trip. The next day, Tammy sits down at a local restaurant and writes a letter to her mother, informing her of her sudden return. Now, the estranged couple is starting to battle thirst and hunger. Tammy finds some old food and water on the boat, but since their journey has just begun, this will not be enough for two people to survive. After spending five long days at the sea, the couple realizes that they've veered off course. Although everything appears to be working fine in their clearly broken boat, Tammy decides to address the issue by fixing the rudder. She dives into the water to inspect the issue, only to find out that the sail was caught underwater all this time. Since recovering the sail is crucial, Tammy collects all the strength she has to make it functional, and after a few attempts, she manages to remove it. A few days later, Tammy finds some sunscreen in the ruins and applies it over her sunburned face. She goes upstairs and checks on Richard's wounds, but the injuries are only getting worse. On top of that, the couple is running out of food pretty fast, so they have to think of a way to feed themselves. Richard claims the only option they have now is to fish, but it's revealed that Tammy is vegan and refuses to kill marine life to satisfy her hunger. However, Richard convinces her that sometimes in life and death situations, you have to compromise with your ideals. Tammy realizes the truth in this and dives into the water, hoping to catch some fish. She throws her spear to attack, but fails to strike and swims back to the surface. Once again, Tammy strikes the spear at a fish, but she can't seem to catch a single one. At this point, Tammy feels hopeless and climbs back into the boat crying and finds refuge in Richard's arms. Moments later, Tammy's seen meditating to deal with the mental stress, and just then, it starts raining. She realizes this is the best thing that's happened to them while being stranded in the sea and bursts out laughing with joy. Now, the couple has spent 18 days in the vast unknown without any signs of land nearby. Desperate to make things work in their favor, Tammy climbs down inside the boat and starts looking for something that might come in handy. And to her surprise, she finds some wine in perfectly good condition. She takes the bottle upstairs and the two start drinking, hoping to distract their minds, even if it's just for a few hours. A few days later, Tammy somehow finds a guitar in perfect working condition and starts playing it to pass some time. Richard looks at her and says that he deeply regrets meeting her. He feels guilty for putting Tammy in this situation when all she wanted was to escape the absurdities of life. But on the other hand, Tammy claims that she does not regret a single thing and assures Richard that she'll forever carry these memories with her as part of her story. That evening, Richard plays Wonderwall on the guitar and Tammy pretends to like it. He started to feel a lot better and the two talk about his childhood and how he lost his mother at an early age. Richard reveals that his mother hung herself when he was seven years old but he never knew what made her do it. However, he still talks to his mother in his mind to cope with the fact that he never got to feel a mother's love in his life. Tammy empathizes with him and playfully asks what his mother would be thinking of him right now. In response, Richard gets up and asks her to marry her, even though they might not survive the next day. Tammy is overjoyed to hear this and she gladly accepts the proposal, while Richard gives her a handmade ring. Props to the guy for improvising. Seriously. He then promises to buy her a real one once they land in California. In the next scene, we see the couple has spent 29 days adrift all by themselves. That night, Tammy has a hallucination in which a huge ship passes right by their boat but does not stop to rescue them. She even shoots the flare gun to grab the imaginary captain's attention but soon realizes that she's seeing things and breaks down in tears. At this point, both of them are hopeless about their situation 
and this time, even Richard has no energy to pretend they might make it. However, he still has some fight left in him and tells her that even after all this, they're still breathing. A few days later, Richard is barely able to sit straight due to dehydration while Tammy gives him some water to drink. She reveals that they now have about 700 miles to reach Hawaii and asks them to stay strong a little longer. We're then taken to the day it all started. Richard and Tammy are sailing across the Pacific Ocean in Peter's boat. Just then, the marine navigators inform them about a massive storm about a thousand miles in front of them. Richard believes the storm might die out in a few hours, but as a precaution, they decide to alter the course to avoid the storm. However, after sailing for a few hours, the couple finds themselves directly approaching the center of the storm. Since they have very little room to steer away, the duo decides to go head on and prepare themselves for the worst. Now, it's been 33 days since the couple had last seen an island. Tammy is lying down with Richard, and the sky is as beautiful as it can be, almost poetic. However, she claims to have a gut feeling about something terrible approaching them. And fortunately for them, they're only hit by a mild blizzard, which is just a minor bump considering the situation they're in. The next day, Tammy tells Richard some stories about her childhood to keep him awake. She reveals how she used to lock herself inside the tub when her parents were arguing. This made her escape reality and pretend she was in some other place. Since both of them desperately want to escape the sea at this point, Tammy suggests Richard do the same. In a flashback scene, we see the couple being tossed around in the ocean. Tammy picks up the emergency GPS transmitter, hoping to report their location to the marine control base. The duo is doing everything in their power to keep the boat afloat. Richard realizes that the water current is way too strong tonight, so he advises Tammy to go downstairs. However, Tammy does not want to leave him alone, but Richard convinces her to leave regardless. Just as she's climbing down, a strong wave hits their vessel and Tammy's thrown inside the boat in an instant. Richard, on the other hand, falls to the bottom of the ocean after losing consciousness. Next, Tammy wakes up and realizes that she was all alone in the boat. All those tragic moments spent with Richard were just her hallucinations. When they got tossed around during the storm, Richard lost his life instantly. However, this illusion gave her the strength to carry on. In the next scene, Tammy goes down into the water to hunt for fish, and this time, she succeeds at the first strike. Despite being a vegan, she starts to eat the fish for her survival. Just then, a tiny little bird catches up with her, but since birds are not supposed to be in the ocean, Tammy's surprised to see it there. Then, she uses her binoculars to see what lies ahead of her and notices a dry land in the distance. And, a few miles west, a ship is seen sailing through. Immediately, Tammy loads up her flare gun and shoots it towards the ship. She does not want to waste this opportunity and shoots another shot. And before she knows it, the ship starts approaching her. Suddenly, Tammy has an overflow of emotions as she exclaims in joy and sadness. A few moments later, the ship arrives at the scene and rescues her. A few days go by and Tammy returns to visit the boat. She looks at the pictures and gets emotional as the memories spent with Richard floods her mind. When she notices the flower he'd given to her, Tammy breaks down in tears at the memory of her husband. The next day, Tammy decides to visit the beach where they first kissed. She stands on the shore, but this time, she's all by herself. Then, Tammy leaves the flower in the water in memory of her deceased husband. As the movie comes to an end, we see that Tammy is still sailing the ocean by herself.